Hello everyone, in this exercise we will explore the following commands uh, extrude curve, bounding box, offset, boolean difference, volume, and trim to create a basic mold and calculate the volume and thus how much plaster is needed to create that mold. So to do that we're going to start from our split and trim file, the previous exercise. And I'm going to just work from one initially. I can use the hide command if I don't want to deal with, um, if I don't want to look at these other ones right now, I'm just going to use the hide command. Look at that. Additional commands hide. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use a bounding box command. And what the bounding box command does is we can just accept these standard um, choices. And what the bounding box command is, is creates a rectangular, a rectangle to the extents of your objects that you had selected. If you do the bounding box command with a three dimensional objects, it'll instead be a rectangular prism instead of a rectangle. So we have this and then I'm going to use the offset command to offset this curve. Um, an inch away because an inch is about the minimum amount that you would want as like an extra buffer um, on a mold to absorb water especially important for slip casting this would probably be a I guess it could be slip cast but it would probably be a press molded uh, a press mold um, so not as important so let me do the offset command again now that I'm not focusing on talking um, we see right here that the distance is set on a quarter of an inch, 0.25. I'm going to click that. I'm going to change that to one inch and then click. We could do it inward or outward, just depending on where our cursor is. I want to do it outward. And I don't want this. I'm just going to delete it. So now I have these curves. I'm going to um, go back to all four viewports. And I think I'll use the move command two, and I'm going to move from the center of this rectangle to the origin. And I can, again, reference the origin just by pressing zero. So now it's nice and aligned on my work area. Okay, now I'm going to use the, the extrude curve command. And we have a few options here. We want the output to be surface. We don't want to extrude to both sides. We just want to extrude up in this case, but we do want it to be solid. Solid meaning a closed poly surface. And now we can drag up and down to create this mold or um, actually, sorry, I'm going to go back. First, I'm just going to do this extrusion and I'm going to extrude this, um, the thickness that I um, want the actual tile to be. So again, I want it to be solid. Yes, both sides no. And I could click somewhere. I can also just type in a number. So I'm going to do 0.5. I want it to be half an inch thick, I think. And we can shade this viewport so we can see what we're looking at. And now I'm going to select this rectangle. Oops. The last command I did was um, shades, not uh, extrude curve. So I'm going to extrude curve again. And in this case, I'm going to extrude it how thick I want the mold to be in totality. Again, I want at least an inch of plaster between a thick, thickness of plaster. So I'm going to do a 1.5, 1 plus the 0.5 of our form. So 1.5. And in this case, it might be nicer um, to, instead of doing a shaded viewport, to do a ghosted viewport. And then we can see what we're working with a little bit more. We could even, and it allows us to click on objects that would otherwise be hidden. Um, we could also change the layer of this to visualize even better. You can see that there are certain commands that are just used all the time. Okay, so now 
I am going to use the Boolean, why is trim here? Trim should be here. Now I'm going to use the Boolean difference command. So again, while learning a new command, I'm going to start the command with um, nothing selected. To get to the Boolean difference command, I can long click here and then select Boolean difference. I could do solid where Boolean, Boolean difference, or I could just type boo diff and um, initiate the command. So select surfaces or poly surfaces to subtract from. I want that to be a rectangular prism. Press enter once I have those surfaces, okay. Um, then to subtract with, I wanna use this form right here. So I'm gonna do that and I could rotate my view, but I think I'll just rotate my object. Um, I'm going to rotate here 180. Rotate. Not necessary though. Okay, I probably should have rotated my curve with it, I guess. Looked ugly with it in the wrong place. Okay, so here we have my form. The last thing we are going to do is to use the volume command, which calculates the volume of a closed polysurface. If it's not closed, if it has a hole in it, it doesn't have any volume. So select so solid, solid or solid meshes. You can do it with meshes too. Um, and we see here that this is 428 cubic inches. By the way, if you don't have your notes tab, I hope this doesn't delete everything. If you don't have your notes tab or sidebar, whatever you want to call it, you can type notes. And if you, then it's just floating, you can bring it over here and dock it. And um, notes is something I always have, very useful. Um, something that I might take notes of, for example, is mold is, how much was it? 424 um, cubic, cubic inches. How do you cubic inches? Um, and a bag of plaster yields about 1,250 cubic inches. So if I do some basic calculations, um, I could open calculator, um, but Rhino has the calculator tab all in itself. Um, it's not there by default, but you can click this little gear icon to open the, or to enable the panel, um, if I knew how to look, enable the panel calculator. So here I'm going to do 424 divided by 1250. That's 0.33, um, pretty much exactly a third. And then I can multiply that by 50. And this is, which 50, by the way, is how many pounds of plaster are in a bag. So this is telling me that I will need 17 pounds of plaster to create this mold. Um, you generally, put, you might want to mix like another half pound or pound just to play it a little bit safe, um, but pretty reliable.